Welcome to the Voice of the Lord Bible Teaching Study. I'm going to cover a difficult chapter because it has a lot of spiritual symbolism, and that is Revelation 17 and 18. Uh, we're going to see what the symbolism means because it's actually explained in Revelation 17 about the Babylon and uh, the different uh, things that are mentioned about the woman. Uh, mistress Babylon. Um, we're going to go ahead right now and talk about who is Babylon. Well, Babylon is the great cities that have turned to an anti-Christ spirit. Uh, could be socialism, could be far left wing uh, politics, it could be uh, people that or anti-God, anti-government. But look at verse 1 of chapter 17. And this is basically uh, verse 1. It says, And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came up and spoke with me, saying, Come here, and I shall show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Okay, let's break that down. Many waters is always referenced to the flood of lawlessness. Um, and the harlot is the harlot is mentioned in verse one, and it goes right into two what the harlot is, whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality, and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. Okay. A harlot is a false uh, church, a false prophet, uh, basically has a standard of righteousness, but is committing uh, sins with the world. Has the world in the church, that's the harlot. Uh, James uh, 4, uh, 1 through 5 talks about if you're a lover of the world, you are a double-minded adulteress. You are a harlot. If you uh, love the world and represent uh, Christianity. And so uh, the kings of the earth are these uh, great nations and they're committing acts of immorality. Those who dwell on the earth are drunk, which means they have the teachings in the wine of teachings of the doctrines, of religious doctrine. But yet, uh, they allow sin into the church of uh, their doctrine. Uh, and as you see here in verse 3, And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. The wilderness is the world. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, uh, full of blasphemous names, having seven heads. And the seven heads of those seven churches in chapter 3 of Revelations, which are the seven uh, churches like one is Laodicea, uh, lukewarm church, and so the ten and ten horns is uh, ten leaders, ten nations that are falling behind into the uh, spirit of the Antichrist. Ten nations. Okay, so as you see here, and the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet. That's the uh, false church, false prophet. Adorned with gold and precious stone and pearls, having in her and a gold cup full of abominations of the unclean uh, things of her immorality. As you read Matthew 23, the whole chapter is about the Pharisees and the scribes with their religion uh, basically wanting to crucify Christ. They have uh, a spirit of religion. And they make the outside look good in their church, but inside they're full of dead men bones and every unclean thing. Um, and that's what the harlot church is. They have a false doctrine uh, not lined up with the Word of God. And so that's what the uh, woman is, is the harlot false church, the false prophet. And upon her forehead is a name was written in a mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, as the bottom of the page, and then you go up to the top, 
of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. And the reason why they have the blood of, uh, of the saints and the blood witnesses of Jesus is because they're not going to receive the true gospel of the word of God in the church. They're going to follow the harlot doctrine and it doesn't fit in their box of religion. It doesn't fit in their church doctrine. So they will verbally kick out uh, the true gospel from the church, including the saints that have the true gospel and the witnesses of Jesus. They don't want to partake and they don't want them in the church. Um, in many cases, like Islam, will not tolerate uh, Christians and so they'll behead Christians, the Islam religion. That is the blood of the saints. And then um, I want you to see in this uh, Revelation 17 that um, in verse 5, uh, notice that it said uh, the mark. Let's look at that. Mark uh, 17, 5. A mark on their forehead is a mystery. And let's turn there. And upon their forehead, a name was written, and that name is Babylon. Well, the mark on the forehead is a mystery because Babylon is the world and the harlot church, the false church, that will be uh, in the uh, woman, uh, the false, that's the mark of the beast, really. When you have... Uh, mark on the foreheads the mark of the beast it is the world and the harlot church false church that um, that is known as Babylon the mystery Babylon and Babylon as you look uh, further down you can see this in verse uh, let's look at 17 5, 15 um, At verse 15, it said, The waters which you, uh, let's see here, the waters which you were the harlot sits are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. So it explains here that you see the harlot sits are people. It's multitudes, nations, and tongues, the false church. And as you see in verse 16, the ten horns which you saw is the beast, and these will hate the harlot. And the ten horns is uh, the nations, the leaders of the nations, and they're going to hate the hate you, and they will hate the harlot, and they will make her desolate and naked, and will eat her flesh, and will burn them up with fire. Um, basically, as you go further down to verse 18 it says that the woman whom you saw is the great city now the woman the Babylon woman whom you saw is this great city Babylon is the great cities of the of the nation such as uh, you got Maryland Baltimore uh, Atlanta Chicago Portland Los Angeles uh, you got Minneapolis you got uh, cities like Milwaukee, New York, and Atlanta. These are uh, great cities that is known uh, to be Babylon. And Babylon is the uh, Antichrist spirit, more or less like social far left uh, agenda uh, that runs with the Antichrist spirit, the great cities that are going to set to fire uh, the city. Uh, in verse, look at chapter 18, verse 9, it says that the Babylon cities will set, be set on fire. Look at that in verse 9. Okay, and the kings of the earth who committed these acts of immorality and lived sensually with her will weep and lament over her, Babylon, the great cities, when they see the smoke of these great cities burning. Verse 10, standing at a distance because of the fear of her torment, 
okay, saying, Whoa, whoa, is this great city Babylon, the great cities, the strong city. For in one hour, like Chicago, Portland, your judgment has come. So in one hour, you're going to see all these cities across the nation on fire. You also see cities outside the United States on fire that are far left, anti-Christ spirit. Uh, these cities are going to follow the same thing and be anti-government and uh, rebelling against the government and setting the cities on fire. And that's really what it is. Uh, they're going to be angry, going against the ten uh, nations, the ten leaders. It says in that verse 16, there's ten horns, which you saw in the beast. These will hate the harlot and will eat her flesh and burn them up with fire. So basically you got uh, ten horns, which are ten great nations that's going to have uh, anger towards the uh, Babylon, the harlot of Babylon, that's going to set the cities on fire. So it's government versus Babylon people that are anti-government. You're going to have the anti-government Babylon harlot that's going to be battling the ten horns of the great leaders of ten nations. So there's going to be fires. It's going to spread one-third of the earth of fires in the great cities of Babylon. Rebellion against the government. And so this is going to happen in the future. In the next ten years, you're going to have the harlot of Babylon and uh, the great cities across the face of the world, including the United States, like Portland and Chicago and New York, that's going to rebel against the government, and there's going to be great fires on the city. That's what the scripture says in Revelations 18.9, cities on fire. 18.21 as you look in verse 21 of 18, you're going to see that there's going to be violence in the cities of Babylon. And a strong angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea. And that sees that uh, flood of lawlessness. Thus will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and will not be found any longer. Okay, so what you see in verse 21 is going to be violence throughout these great cities of Babylon. And, of course, this clashes with our government and the police. And the sounds of harpists and musicians and flute players in the city and trumpeters will not be heard in the city any longer. No craftsmen of any craft will be found in the city any longer. The sound of the mill will not be heard in you any longer. And as you go down to verse 23... It says here in Revelations 18, it also says that um, the light of a lamp will not shine in you any longer. The voice of the bridegroom, the bride will not be heard in you any longer. This is the Babylon, the Antichrist people in the city. It says, basically Matthew 25 talks about the uh, wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Well, one had the lamps and and the foolish virgins, the lamp will not shine forth the light any longer. And that's the, uh, the foolish virgins. And it says in there in verse 23, Will not be heard in you any longer, for your merchants were the great men of the earth, because of all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and the saints. Okay. They will attack Christians and they will attack good, righteous people. And um, there will be loss of life. And these uh, violence and fires in these great cities. And notice that um, the merchants will not be hurt any longer. Those are the businesses probably set on fire will not be hurt any longer. Uh, as you look down in verse, well, let's just turn up to verse 19. Notice there at 19, 
It says, And they threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, Woe, woe, the great city in which all these ships at sea became rich of her wealth. In one hour, these great cities, Babylon, has been laid waste. I want you to see that the Babylon is that great city that had ships going in and out of it with merchandise. Um, they will not be bringing in merchandise from China and imports of products and goods because they were the great cities were made rich, but in one hour those cities will be laid waste with fires and violence throughout the city. And so uh, I wanted to point that out. And, uh, and I think I've covered a lot right here, but I wanted to explain what Babylon is and what the harlot is a false prophet, false church. And Babylon is the great cities of the Antichrist spirit that's going to have violence and fires in the future. Um, I just wanted to point those two things out. And what the mark of the beast was explained in chapter 17. And that mark of the beast is a mystery and that mark really is the uh, what we found here is the Babylon that is the abomination of the Antichrist spirit of anti-government uh, and they're gonna be um, spiritual mark that they rebel against God and the government and this mystery is the abomination that's on their forehead and that is Babylon when you become either a false uh, religion or worldly person and you're mixed up into these great cities of Babylon you get that mystery mark on your forehead which you become the uh, abomination of the mark of the beast and I wanted to explain that it's a spiritual mark okay I know you've heard a lot of things about the mark of the beast but it's really a spiritual mark on their forehead and that is Babylon that you become Babylon which is an antichrist spirit a false religion and you don't have the true gospel and Jesus Christ in your in your mind of your forehead and in your on your hand which is your your works of your activities you don't have Jesus okay well I explained it um, I'm gonna move on may God bless you and remember Jesus loves you and stay in the word God bless